Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and in this session of the video we're going to talk about all the vitamins. So in order to talk about all the vitamins, first we need to know about the vitamins which are present and which are required by the human body and which are really important. So we are going to cover up each and every vitamin in a precise manner and we are going to uh, going to cover up the main things regarding vitamins. If, if anybody is going to ask you about any vitamin, so you'll be definitely having an image in your mind about that vitamin and you could, uh, you could picture out all that vitamin in your in your daily life and you can make it as easy as possible and you remember them all in the end so I want you to stay with me till the end in order to understand all the vitamins so let us begin the discussion regarding the vitamins so we have got the vitamins and we divide the vitamins into two parts that is water soluble vitamins and fake soluble vitamins not so much complicated these vitamins are soluble in water and these are soluble in fates so we, in water soluble vitamins we have got mainly two types of vitamins that is ascorbic acid which is vitamin C and we have got vitamin B so vitamin B C are in water soluble but in vitamin B we, we have got we have got a bunch of vitamin B uh, uh, vitamins so which are we call the vitamin B we call the vitamin B complex so there's a complex there are many vitamin B uh, vitamins in the water soluble types so we have got number one the B1 which is thiamine we're going to come to discuss each one in detail in just a bit but just give me a quick review regarding the name so this number B1 thiamine B2 riboflavin B3 niacin B5 pantothenic acid B6 pyridoxine, B7 biotin, B9 folic acid, and B12 psychobalmin. And again, moving towards the fate soluble vitamins, we have got only four fate soluble vitamins. I've already made a quick review video about these vitamins and their name, and you can check that out in the description. So, fate soluble vitamins, we have got vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin E, and vitamin D. So, these are the basic. Uh, you know uh, differentiation between the water soluble and the fate soluble vitamins so there's nothing complicated it's very easy this is all you have to remember for your exams for whatever you got this is the main thing you don't have to worry about opening a book opening up a book and finding a new vitamin there could be small types of vitamins but these are the main major vitamins so let us begin with the water soluble vitamins so in the water soluble vi vitamins we are first going to discuss about the ascorbic acid which is the vitamin c so you will be wondering why a vitamin c is called ascorbic acid it's because it was named ascorbic acid because of its anti-ascorbutic activities. So what is anti-ascorbutic activities? Which means it prevents against scurvy. So ascorbutic, scurvy. Ascorbutic is scurvy. So it prevents uh, from against the uh, against the scurvy that's why it is called ascorbic acid. So it's also called as the vitamin C. All right, so vitamin C is actually very important. One thing you have to remember, uh, they mostly they ask you, vitamin C on boiling, actually, if you heat it much more, it will destroy itself. Even in milk, it is present. Uh, the vitamin C is present, but uh, most, of the, uh, uh, most of the people in the home, they like boil the milk too much. So that's why the vitamin C is destroyed and you can't get the vitamin C through milk. So you have to remember this one as a good point that vitamin C is actually destroyed on excessive heating. So further talking about the vitamin C, we have to remember these things that I have written in the bullet points. So what is, first point is polyl and lysyl hydroxylase. So what does that mean? So what, that means that vitamin C actually acts as a coenzyme in hydroxylation of what? Of proline and lysine. Again. Ascorbic vitamin C acts as a coenzyme. Remember, I'm using the word coenzyme. It does not act directly. It acts as a coenzyme in hydroxylation of proline and lysine. So, which are actually the, the residue of the collagen. So, that's why this thing will be going to help us in understanding the scurvy. So, you have to understand this. All right. We are clear with the first point. Hydroxylation of proline and lysine is actually helped by uh, there's a co uh, extra vitamin in which the vitamin C acts as a coenzyme. 
Number two point is the collagen synthesis. So what does that mean? Well, that means that it helps in the synthesis of a collagen. So how does it help in the synthesis of collagen? We're just going to talk about in just a bit that how does it help in the uh, synthesis of collagen. Number three, we have got the iron absorption in GIT. So what, what does vitamin C does? It, it actually, you know, convert the, uh, actually you can say it reduces the iron from ferric form to the ferrous form and helps in the iron absorption from the intestine. So you can say uh, the uh, ascorbic acid also help in the iron absorption in GIT and convert the ferric form or you can say uh, it, uh, it actually uh, reduces the ferric form which is 3 plus and uh, 2 the ferrous form which is 2 plus. That's it. Help in iron absorption and in GIT and also it, uh, uh, it actually reduces the iron from ferric form to the ferrous form. All right, this is the basic idea regarding this one. One thing I haven't mentioned over here is that vitamin C also helps in the conversion of folic acid to tetrahydrofolate, that is THF. The number four point that is regarding the vitamin C is actually the scurvy. So what is scurvy? So scurvy is actually caused by the deficiency of the vitamin C. When vitamin C is deficient, we have got a we have got a clinical uh, clinical deficiency, which is the scurvy, which results in. A so what are the causes of scurvy? So there are actually two main causes regarding the scurvy. The number first point we what are you can say the first cause is actually uh, reduced or you can say deficient deficient uh, or you can say reduction of folate to THF. So we need tetrahydrofolate uh, that is the active form of folic acid. We don't need folic acid because it does not act directly. So we need tetrahydrofolate. So this. Um, this actually in scurvy it is not converted because vitamin C helps in converting the folic acid to tetrahydrofolate. So when the when the vitamin C is absent, so what happens? Tetrahydrofolate does not form and result in the inability of RBCs to mature, right? And number second point that is it is the deficient hydroxylation of collagen resulting in defective connective tissue. What does that mean? So what that, that means that polyl and lysine are not going to hydrolyze. So they're not going to a process called hydroxylation. If they don't go, they're not going to make a collagen strong or they're not going to make a collagen. So for the collagen to, to, for, to, to be synthesized, these must, these must be, should be hydroxylated. So it is not happening, it is going to have a problem and these two things, that is the folate, THF is not forming and the polyalin and lysyl hydroxylation is not occurring, then that is, there are the two main causes of the scurvy. We're not going to detail uh, about any detail regarding scurvy, but we have to understand that uh, in, uh, in scurvy, the blood vessels become fragile and may spontaneously bleed anywhere in the body. So there are a lot of symptoms of scurvy. We have already made a lecture on it. You go through and we're going to just make a quick uh, video, you know, regarding all vitamins. So let's now let us move towards the thiamine. So the thiamine is